Hi again, I'm Dr. Jason Goodchild from Premier Dental, and I'm sitting here with uh, Lancet Van Gilder, RDH, uh, practicing dental hygienist, uh, public health hygienist, uh, educator, KOL, uh, and I wanted to check in with her, see how she's doing with, at the, during this crisis, and uh, ask her a few questions. So, uh, Lancet, most importantly, how are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I think I'm doing like everybody else is, right? Um, hanging in there, uh, trying not to panic, trying to stay calm, um, knowing that every single week um, things are changing and evolving and yeah. um, out of work, unemployed, just like everybody else. Uh, so uh, we're, doing, we're doing good. You know, uh, my husband has had some changes with his work. Uh, my son is a college student. He's lost his work. So, you know, we're trying to homeschool our daughter as well. So I think we're doing like everybody else, right? Big, massive changes in our work and family life. Yeah. And just trying yeah. to remain positive and hang in there and go with the flow. Every week is a new week. Yeah, it changes uh, minute by minute, hour by hour. But, uh, I'm glad yes. you're doing well and everybody's healthy. We're healthy. So that's the number yeah. one most important thing. Absolutely. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you about is because I know you have some some insight and experience in this is uh, with dental offices being shut down, essentially providing uh, emergency treatment when necessary, I think teledentistry is a topic that a lot of people are thinking about. Uh, and I think a lot of offices are practicing more teledentistry than they ever were before. So, uh, and you have recently educated me on some of the codes and stuff because, you know, I really didn't know that much about it. Um, but uh, can you tell me more about teledentistry and your experience? Yeah, you know, in my mind, this is one big silver lining that has come out of this crisis is it has really opened the minds up for a lot of people that there's all kinds of different ways that we can do things. You know, I've been an advocate for teledentistry for about five years um, in my own home state, tried to pass some legislation last year to make uh, teledentistry legal and wasn't successful in that endeavor. Um, but I think, you know, at the time, people didn't understand why we needed a, a different delivery system, right? Mainstream dental offices operate so wonderfully. People get amazing care there. So I think, you know, this crisis has kind of opened up everybody's eyes that there is a lot of different ways that we can do things. And we have technology like we're using right now, you know, um, to help us stay connected. So, you know, in, in my perspective, teledentistry in this emergency mm -hmm. crisis situation has allowed dentists to keep a relationship with their patients. They can build rapport, they can give them comfort, they can answer questions. Um, but most importantly is they can even do some diagnostic kind of services as well. You know, right now most offices across the country are closed, except to emergency cases, but even in an emergency situation, we just still don't want the provider and the patient in the same room at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, a patient can have a toothache, they can connect with their doctor virtually, whether it's Zoom or a cell phone or a Facebook Messenger. There's all these great tools that we have. Um, and right now, um, we can use all kinds of different platforms. Um, so, you know, I think it's been a wonderful way for dentists to keep a relationship with their patients in this time of crisis. But moving forward, wow, what a great opportunity we have to reach people who aren't currently getting care. You know, elderly, um, homebound, rural areas, reservations. Um, where the whole entire dental team doesn't have to be together in the same place at the same time, we can kind of disperse the team where we need them and still connect virtually and share information. We can collaborate with other medical providers as well, you know, with oral yeah. cancer screenings. Um, I think it's pretty cool. My daughter, my daughter's orthodontist just started teledentistry and we got a little link yesterday that she can still keep her appointment, but we're going to do it virtually. And they posted a YouTube video of how to take intraoral photos at home <laughs> using a flashlight and a cell phone and using your fingers for retraction. You know, we're taking a picture of the right occlusion, the left occlusion, open and closed. So she still gets to keep her orthodontist appointment. And, you know, that's important to me yeah. because we've invested years into orthodontics and thousands of dollars. And so we kind of want to know where, where are we on track, you know? So... Yeah. So the possibilities are endless, and I think we're just on the tip of the iceberg of a whole new way to complement traditional dentistry. So this isn't going to replace anything that we've been doing, but we can change and add. We can have virtual operatories, you know, so you have your in-office patients, and then you have a whole column that's your virtual things where you could do ortho consults, smile makeovers, education, home care instructions. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can be done virtually. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. to complement what we already have. Yeah, no, I, I and, and I saw something uh, on social media the other day about an orthodontist doing the same thing, and uh, they were in fact 
uh, using or recommending uh, two spoons to, to try and hold the cheeks out, which I thought was hysterical. Awesome. And I, I feel like, uh, you know, within the office, there could be kind of a, a, a display of the best ones or even the worst ones there. So that's, that's interesting. You know, you mentioned the idea, and I love it. I love the idea around, um, you know, your, your, your one column of regular patients, and then maybe uh, some virtual patients as well. And, you know, it brings up the question around, and again, you educated me on this, that uh, there are in fact CDT codes, uh, 9995 and 9996. Um, do you think that more insurance companies will begin uh, reimbursing, uh, covering those codes? Or, you know, will it be maybe dependent on a companion code like 0140? You know, how do you see that? Yeah, I think we're going to see all those scenarios kind of play out where right now teledentistry isn't even legal in all states. So we have some big changes to make it legal in all states. Um, luckily in my state, we didn't pass that legislation that I tried so hard for it last year, but our state board of dentistry did say yes, in this time of crisis, you can use teledentistry. Um, but we need to make some changes on the state yeah. level, and then we need to make some changes with reimbursement as well. Some states have gone as far as to mandate, like California, it's mandated that if this provider offers teledentistry or telemedicine, that the insurance company has to pay for it. So, and, and then we have the whole in-between area, right? Um, but we've had those codes, those ADA codes th since maybe 2018. There's two codes, one that allows for a live interaction like we're having, the other one is, you know, the provider can go and see a patient, collect information, store it into a computer, and then later on forward it. And that's yeah. typically what I'm familiar with using because when I work in rural areas, there is no Wi-Fi. We can't have a live connection. There may not even be cell phone service. So a lot of areas that I serve don't have cell phone service or Wi-Fi, so that store and record and forward is really important. So we need multiple ways to do it. And then, of course, we need to get paid for our work. You know, a lot of work yeah. I do is for free and for volunteer, but I do depend on income also to keep the business up and running, right? So we do need to be reimbursed. I did want to point out that the American Dental Association just published um, new interim guidelines on teledentistry just a few days ago. Um, this is what it looks like. It's called the ADA uh, COVID-19 Coding and Billing Interim Guidelines. And it has the codes. It goes into billing, um, processing payments, insurance, consent forms, HIPAA, checklists, all the things that you need to know. There's also a bunch of webinars right now from all of the companies that provide platforms. Um, like I just was on one, on one this morning on tab 32. So there's multiple platforms that you can do it. Um, there's guidance, there's documents, there's webinars. So you don't have to, to just learn blindly. There's lots of resources to help providers learn how to implement this teledentistry thing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I just think that's the wave of the future. I mean, we're just, we're just sort of dipping our toe in right now. And I hope that becomes more of a mainstream regular kind of thing over the course of our work days. Um, but it is important to know that yes, you can get reimbursed as well. Okay. And using yeah. companion codes, there are CDT codes for teledentistry, and then you can combine them with your normal codes, like for an examination or emergency, you know, periodic exam or emergency exam, you can combine them with existing codes as well. 